Oh. All right, my name is Amar Jyot. I'm a registered licensed consultant uh, talking to you from Edmonton, Alberta. Where it's sunny here, it's uh, 30 minutes past one o'clock. Tell me what your problem is. Tell me what are we discussing today? Uh, sir, uh, basically we are <coughs> we are applying. We were thinking of uh, applying for a common law sponsorship. We have been living together from the last one year. So now the thing was that I have a PGWP as well. I have finished a two years of college in uh -huh. one year in Sheridan, one year in Durham College. Uh -huh. So now we were looking ahead. So we were like we were supposed to get into this stuff. So we thought we should talk to you. All right. So let me let me just uh, first uh, ask some uh, introductory questions. So you are you are on a postgraduate work permit right now. And when will it will it expire? When it's expiring? No, I uh, basically I just finished my college and I have to apply for the so you have to apply. <coughs> OK, sorry. Yes. So you have to apply. Your, so uh, have you applied already? You are in the process of applying. No, we haven't applied because uh, our I just finished my exams like last month. Okay. This month only. So we, so we were like concerned, like we were concerned, like how we are going to move. That's fine. That's fine. So that's that's OK. So uh, you are good. And introduce your friend uh, to me. I'm Claire. I'm his fiance. Hi, you Claire? Yes. Hi. How are okay, you? Good. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad uh, that you were joined in and you can ask some basic questions. Can I ask you some questions to you? Yes, sure. You you are a Canadian citizen? I'm Canadian, yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, have you been married before or this is the first time uh, you I, are in a relationship? I, I had a common law relationship a few years back. Okay. And, and I, I noticed on the paperwork that it asks for his information, like my exes. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember his birthday. Like, is that a problem if I say no? Uh, you Haven't... you can say you can say that you don't don't remember, but you have to mention the relationship anyway. Uh, okay. So, uh, when when did it end? How many years ago? Uh, over five years ago, like close to ten now. Yeah. Over I five years ago. And more than five what, years ago, yeah. And was that person a foreign national or a Canadian? Oh, he's Canadian. He's, he, he was Canadian. Okay, so that's fine. So as far as your uh, uh, your eligibility is concerned, you are you are single, you are unmarried, and of course you're not in a previous common law. Uh, do you work? I do. I work as a security guard. Okay. And uh, um, what else? Uh, you have been living together for the past 12 months, I, I guess. What, Correct, yeah. what what proof do you have of uh, living together? What cohabitation proof do you have at present? Uh, rental receipts. To be very honest, uh, I was, uh, we were living in Durham last year. So she, in Durham last year, we, you came to me at, uh, came to my place at April. Yeah. But that time the lease was on my name. So she was living with me that time. Okay, so yeah. what what I what I strongly recommend is that you go to the immigration website first, and uh, take a look at the checklist. The checklist is very clear on what documents they require to to prove that both parties are living together. So what they need is, in the past twelve months, uh, they need at least twelve months of cohabitation proof, which is. Uh, possibly every both of you are getting uh, mail at the same address. You have uh, joint names on utility bills or maybe lease agreement or uh, uh, definitely they would want to see because you may have mingled your financial affairs together. You may have a joint bank account uh, and stuff, maybe joint insurance account or joint credit card account and those those things. Uh, at the yeah. end of at the end of all this checklist, you, you can also do a statutory declaration you can go to a lawyer or a notary notary uh, or a commissioner of both notary uh, notary public as well and do a statutory declaration that which is an oath uh, that you are writing that you have been living together so that that will suffice for now okay go ahead okay so we have got <coughs> we have the checklist we already downloaded it yesterday okay yeah the only thing that was troubling because uh, she 
she she was like like previous five year addresses we were not able to like consider she was not able to consider like what are the addresses it's because... hard to remember all of them there yeah. okay so so that's that's not a problem legally uh if you on when you start filling up the forms if you do not know any information on the form like address history or previous uh you know spouse previous common law partners date of birth and his address and stuff uh you you can you must write that i do not remember or i do not know and let them okay. let the immigration figure it out let the immigration investigate more on your behalf so uh okay. what what you don't know you tell them you don't know that's it that's it it's not a crime not to not to know okay okay that's good but i'm i'm more concerned about you know I'm not concerned about lack of information on minute details on the address and postal code or something, and that's not what I'm concerned about. Uh, when you evaluate an application, I'm concerned about uh, how did this relationship start? What is the evolution of this friendship uh, building into romance and and legal relationship? Uh, you know, what do you do at present? How have you uh, combined your affairs into one so that it you know looks like is a genuine bona fide conjugal relationship do you know what i mean yeah that is that is what i am i am concerned about in this application and that those are the factors that will be evaluated when the immigration opens your package and then they look at you why should we give this guy uh, the immigration based on this relationship that is what i am more concerned about so okay. as long as you your uh all your t's are crossed and i's are dotted in, in those regard i think you have nothing much to worry about okay okay that's good to know so uh the other other factors of course you can do do a checklist and if you can read on the guide you will see uh they they want to find out if the uh if the couple have exclusive relationship that means they are not seeing anybody i mean you will be surprised how many people come to me and say hey i have a girlfriend by the way on the site and you know this is what we have so they want to see exclusivity of relationship uh you know how do they uh how do they combine affairs together like for example uh you know perhaps you have a lease agreement do you do shopping together did, did you buy things together as yeah. you know, joint yeah, couple? Yeah. those those are the factors yeah. uh, household activities what are the living arrangements you know how do you uh perhaps share your household chores you know uh does your relationship is evident to the outside world that you are a couple when you you yeah. know when you fill up an application form maybe to some other uh, i mean just an example let's say when you check into a hotel for like a honeymoon trip or so do you sign as a husband and wife you know as a partner together is are your bills together that those are the things that they that they look at that your <laughs> your intentions and all responsibilities have been combined into one that's what they look look at yeah we have like uh, uh, our birthday celebrations with the family with the thanksgiving celebration with the family with her family Good. like like her father her mother and uh, her grandparents her yeah, my family her paternal paternal grandparents we have been then and there from the last one year together yeah that's, except for the covid stuff but that's no oh yeah okay that's that's yeah. wonderful so so yeah. what what i'm i'm trying to understand what are the what are the uh, what is the hesitation in your mind what what is blocking you from starting this application we were concerned about that that stuff the we don't want it to misinterpret anything we just as our yeah case, we didn't want to misinform about like my ex or anything like Yeah. Cuz we started, we started to fill out the paperwork yesterday but it was just with his college and stuff too like he was too busy for anything else. Yeah. So now we're we're now we're like this is the focus. It is it is impossible. Look, it is impossible for any applicant uh for an application like this to uh, remember each and every detail of the past life for the past, you know, like address history for the past 10 years and I've had some examples where where somebody who was married many times let's say three times mm -hmm. and i mean and when the form ask you can you list down the address of the ex and they say i don't know i'm not in contact with the ex how I mean how how can you expect to remember or yeah. to to denote the address of of the 
of the ex-husband who who I did not see for the past 10 years. So right. it is impossible for everybody to fill each and every box and say, I remember this accurately. And so in your case, if you don't do not just write a cover letter telling clearly that this question number, you know, I do not know the information about this, but hey, I just know the name. This is my previous common law partner. And this okay. is the name. This is data part. That's it. OK. That's it. So, what else? So how we can go ahead with the application if we go ahead with you as a consultant for us? Yeah, just just to just to do uh, full justice to the application and to you, this application uh, many applications in the Canadian system, they do not require any lawyer or do not require any consultant to to represent you at this stage. Uh, this application is fairly straightforward. The checklist and the forms are listed on the website. Uh, you can you can type, you know, open, save them on a computer. Keep on typing as soon as you uh, fill them, print it and then put this in an envelope and mail it out. Uh, the the real need of a lawyer or a consultant starts if at all there is any letter for explanation or perhaps maybe an interview or anything that requires you know interpretation of some some statutes or some some regulations in it that is the real need of a lawyer but hey uh, you, you know you typically in your case if all the facts are clear you have solid uh, evidence of living together and your facts are you know not dubious I, I i don't think you need any any lawyer to represent your application at this stage of uh, uh, the start of the application and one thing sir uh, one thing is our concern last year like uh, we were not able uh, when we get into uh, rental units ek do jagah hamara jo rental ka tha wahan pe do teen jagah hamari setting nahi baith pai rehne ki तो हमारी हमने मूव किया इस लास्ट ईयर में दो तीन बार तो बट जो जो कॉलम है वो सिर्फ पांच ये वी हैव ओनली फाइव कॉलम्स टू शो लाइक लिविंग हिस्ट्री ऑफ हर फाइव इयर बट एड्रेस इज अ मोर दैट्स अ गुड क्वेश्चन दैट्स अ गुड क्वेश्चन among all the boxes where where you see the number of rows are limited there are five or six sometimes you know people have a long uh, employment history or a residential history and if the if the rows are quite limited for you, so there's another strategy that you can use. You can write inside the box C attached and then make a separate box in a Microsoft you know, document like a uh, you know, um, uh, Microsoft table, uh, the table in the Microsoft document, and then you can keep writing on this and then uh, tell them, tell them in the form that this answer to this question is accompanying the main application is not we cannot fill in so that that will do the trick okay okay so now we have to what exactly is your guide we simply download the form and fill start filling it up down download the form start filling it up uh, fulfill the checklist uh, and uh, and that's it you are you're done uh, pay the fees online you have all the photographs all the proof of relationship uh, mm -hmm. you know meeting together chatting history but, maybe you know all the regular yeah, stuff the only thing we we are concerned is like we don't have rental agreements because i tell you uh, in oshawa i was having a rent a rental agreement but humne yeah. uh, he was a chinese landlord so we we paid him every every month we had an email sent to him but we don't have the written receipt from him that it is there and after that uh, i was live in etobicoke when we were living the uh, indian students have uh, uh, released the complete house from somebody and they were giving us like for 750 bucks yeah they said what and yeah. uh, in in the in those in those circumstances where you do not have a formal paper lease to furnish uh, what i would do if i were you i would go back to the landlord and ask them to give a statement in writing that I lived from in this place from this day to this date at the least. Okay. So we have to go to the, talk to the landlords in that case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or if they are if they are non-cooperative, maybe ask uh, some of the other uh, uh, co-tenants who were living there. You know, just have their testimonial to to verify that you know this guy was actually living here. But. Uh, 
a, a general living history, uh, employment history, address history. Those are those. I, I what I think in, in this application, those are minor issues. It's not a big issue uh, mm -hmm. in this application. Uh, the the most critical part of this application is both the sponsor and the applicant. So you are the applicant and she is the sponsor. Mm -hmm. You have solid, verifiable proof that you were living together yeah. at one single address under one single roof for at least 12 months. That is what must yeah. be like, you know, solid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that uh, one thing more is there, like, uh, last year when she first moved she moved to her friends and then i was either she was living with me or i was living with her yeah I so yeah so that, that's fine that it's not a problem so what i would do in your case is i would make a separate table uh the the government does not care whether you are living with her or she is living with you at different locations at different timings as long as you can make a tab like a uh you know the Microsoft spreadsheets and and prove that both the applicant and the sponsor were living together at at different addresses for the past for the at least 12 months. That is all is to meet the definition of common law. OK, so after filling the forms, uh, can we send you and get cross verified before submission? Yeah, we can do that later on. Yeah, sure. We can we can do that since, you know, there's another problem because I'm in Edmonton and Mm -hmm. uh, it's not possible for you to physically come to yeah. to have me see. It's it just uh, it becomes a little challenge to see everything uh, in in person. But hey, we can we can manage it that way, and uh, you know then we can decide whether you need my representation or not, and then we can go. Uh, I want to let you know so that so that you are aware, uh, you are seeking permanent immigration into Canada based on relationship with a Canadian citizen. Uh, there are two ways to do this. Uh, one is uh, since since you were not born in Canada and you have nationality uh, overseas, there are two ways to do this. One is you can have the Canadian High Commission in, uh, let's say, in India to process that. You can choose to that to go that way, or you can choose to have it done within Canada. So there, there, there are big differences in how this processing is done. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are choosing to get your status changed from temporary to permanent from within Canada, the immigration office uh, uh, in Canada, they decide everything. The only problem is if they, and sometimes you need to know this, if, if they deny your application, then you have no right of appeal. But if somebody, for example, let, just to give you a, a comparative example, if somebody was living in India, for example, and she applies for him from overseas and if that person is denied then that person has a right to appeal the refusal into the immigration refugee board so that's a big difference so within canada there's no appeal rights outside canada there's appeal right. you must you need to know this okay so what you suggest should we apply well, from well no I'm, i don't suggest anything i just want you to say i you know so that you understand this so that uh, okay. i i I'll want do. you to focus i want you to focus and make your uh make your application and the proof uh strong and and you know you know mm -hmm. non so non-assailable okay no problem we will try to find the documents and we will fill it the document and hopefully we will send the documents all the uh, things to you okay so that's it uh and one question was there i just forget it because it was when you were talking yeah about... no problem go ahead mm -hmm. I'll text you about that question. I forgot it. I'm really sorry. Yeah, no problem. No problem. So from the from the sponsor side, she will need to have at the least uh, um, some kind of proof of income, maybe a job letter or a, like a mm. income slip pay stubs or maybe a tax return for 2019 or mm. any other source of income that is coming from the government. Maybe the recent, uh, you know, I don't know the the CERB uh, mm. anything. So we, you, need to, you need to prove that she is capable financially of taking care of the household. Uh, she is making like uh, uh, 900, 2, uh, 2,950 bi-weekly. 
Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's fine. As long as you have proof, that's okay. I've seen so many examples where the the sponsor is willing to, you know, sponsor the venue, applicant, but they have no income. Uh, they have no, maybe they are on welfare or they are on EI or, you know, uh, you know, something. There's, there's some financial and they have no income. So that becomes a little challenging because now the government has to figure out how how on earth will you be able to support the person for at least three years for food, shelter, clothing, and other things. So that becomes less. So as, if you have them, that's fine. Okay. okay. Is there anything you think that we should know? <laughs> uh, you, you asked the question. Is, is disability a valid income? No, no. No, okay. I mean, so, no, it is, it is an income. I, 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 have it as, I have it as a, like a supplementary income. It, 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 is, it is part of the income. That's fine. Yeah. But I've gone back to work. It will like, not so go I... against you, no. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate your help. You know. Okay. I, I have a question to ask. How did you find out about me? How did you discover about uh, calling me? Uh, Online, I think. I think we we were looking at different different resources. Oh, okay. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for your time, and I wish you well, and uh, good luck for your future application. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank Have you a great so day. much. Take care.